and when I entered the project, I was still really uncertain um, where the whole thing would go. And I'll take you from here and I'll plug you in there. And so right away in the beginning, I was like, wow, this is my tribe. Like I super feel comfortable here. And <gasps> oh, Emma, she's gorgeous. Way. Yeah, she's so cute. So yeah, I'll, I'll just like listen in on the background. That first morning when I logged on, I was like, oh my God, what have I got myself into? And I was like, I want. Nope, I can't do it anymore. I'm too tired. Um, so I really like pushed um, my expectations of like what my skill set was. They, are, they just blew me away with ideas. Because actually it was the most fun I've actually had in my job so far. The journey from like our initial ideas to what we have now. That was really, really incredible for me. The, this, the uncertainty, if you can deal with the uncertainty and you're sort of confident enough, I think it is a strength of this project, definitely. Yeah, I kind of can't quite believe it's come off. You know, you like you start at the start and you think this is quite high risk and, and will it work? Honestly, I loved the first two days of the SFA because I think they did such a great job of getting everyone so amped up that they wanted to spend their time working on this and not, you know, in, in their spare time. We don't want to just do this for fun. This is about really making a difference and having a legacy. And how can we make sure that that happens by the things that we create and think about? To find these shiny things. What is it that we could... Uh, produce or communicate to the wider public that would be shiny to capture their attention. I think in sustainability, it's really important to focus on the skills that you have that you can bring to the cause um, and also knowing where to kind of draw your boundaries around the issue. The chat was sort of popping off when all of the group leaders were announcing what they were going to do and what their project was and everyone was just getting more and more excited each time. We just everybody um, demonstrated what we could do and it was more like a come together pro uh, like a, yeah more come together feeling or you know first I loved how many people there were I didn't know how many people there were going to be and then after the first day when we were put to the small groups and we had a chance to sort of, even in this big, huge Zoom call, to like actually have real conversations. I know you're all very excited. Um, so I tried my very best to really kind of put you into groups that are like one of your first three preferences. And I think I managed that quite well. But if you're like super unhappy, please just let me know. I felt that everyone was so motivated and so excited to be part of this that we just did not care. Some of us, we were in the in the uh, laboratories. I'm, I'm in the middle of an experiment at the moment. So is it all right if I'm just uh, on mute in the background listening in? Yeah, yeah, no, that's fine. <laughs> we are the lungs of the world, the representation of diversity of people, places, plants, and animals. We have multiversity and still today, we are watching everywhere. Our leaders are trying to make us not be really aware. It was really exciting, actually. It was kind of because I hadn't really done any creative writing before. So I kind of came in as just a completely open book. It was really interesting because I mean, it almost seemed like every minute people were just like adding more stuff on top of each other. And it kind of like everyone was bouncing off each other in the session. The thing you said about the trees, a friend of mine was telling me about pecan trees. If one tree is attacked by parasites, they send out chemical signals and they have this vast network of roots actually that communicate with each other and then symbiosis with fungi. You don't really expect that. Like usually you associate online meetings with kind of like everyone's on mute and they unmute themselves, say something and they're not. But it seemed really like, yeah, we were all kind of like all bouncing off each other. And it was just really, really like inspiring to see. And it was, all, it was almost like we were all there in person and it was just, just as if not more productive to do it that way. So... That was really cool. It was actually quite nice to uh, like enjoy writing on a different level, I guess, and for a different purpose as well. Uh, actually, I think online works in a way because, and what we often find in in-person training, particularly people working in a group, one strong dynamic that overwhelms the ideas of the people who are a little bit more hesitant about what they want to do or don't know what they want to do or have an idea but aren't strong enough to really force that as their idea. This is this has allowed them to each keep their own individuality and I've liked I've liked that much. So let's go ahead. I ah, see this is where click on the screen. Here we go. So you chose comics. Ta-da! 
memes, wonderful. I think it's the message is the most important thing. The format, how you package and display this is more important than getting the anatomy correct or, or, or airbrushing it or using sophisticated art software. Okay, so, so Gary was uh, really nice and helpful because not only he guided us through the process of how to create uh, comics, but also how to engage audience and how to talk to people in a simple and direct way. One of the people in our group, Julia, she's from Brazil, so she was really giving us like a personal insight into what's happening in the Amazon. So that was really insightful to hear from her. And that's kind of how our project stemmed from, rather than just being in the Western world, sort of, oh yeah, the Amazon is on fire, but we can't do anything to actually hear from her. And that made me go and read a lot more about it to sort of build my project up. The process has allowed every person in our group to do what they want to do and not be um, influenced by what other people are doing. So everybody's been given that space to be able to do something around the subject they're interested in and in the format they're interested in. Yeah, I think it was really impressive just to see the quality of each of the pieces, um, especially considering how short the space of time was that they've had to work with. We, each of us, are producing like mini broadcast. Um, I can't actually hear it. Ah. Um, what if you don't click um, apply at the bottom right. Okay, ah, yeah, yeah, sorry. Sure. Um, a lot of our time was um, was spent with learning the software, Reaper, which was something that was new to all of us, um, and but also um, pretty easy to use, I think. So I think I've learned that it takes a bit more kind of time and patience uh, to get to the bottom of solving maybe technical issues. We are talking through Slack and we get slides, like preview of each one's projects. With all these layers kind of building up and building up. Um, yeah, it's really, really cool. And I think um, it works so well as like a concept, um, just having those sounds be in the voice of the earth. Yeah, that was kind of my piece. Uh, Everyone's kind of commitment and enthusiasm really can help you overcome the barriers of being distant, you know, being in different locations at the same time. Uh, it's kind of nice to get really um, artistic. Uh, I didn't expect that. When I get it into Illustrator, we can add some more like ridgy lines. <laughs> I was really hoping yeah. for your artistic man. <laughs> yeah, um. I can help for sure. They were so enthusiastic and they were so willing to do things together. And you can see it when they talked about their own maps that they were so uh, excited about it and they were having fun. It wasn't like, oh dear, okay, I'll do this. And and as also the trainer, Ellie. So we'll be making a similar kind of thing to this with like the little um, textures and little place names and things like that. Um, like how do we navigate them? How do we navigate out of this kind of mess that we're in? And how do we show a clear path in these maps that we're going to make? I think that was the main thing. And it's just making sure that it's interesting and engaging for people who don't want to do the drawing side when it is very drawing heavy. The drawing element is just a, a tool to visualize that rather than you know, the, the kind of end thing that we're trying to learn. We used these individual maps and created a bigger output. Uh -huh. so this is like a public secondary school. I think it's a very powerful tool to um, kind of bring something to people that, so for example, how we mapped it made it really, he explained it then and it made us understand the problems easier than we would probably find understand them if we would say read an academic paper at the start it was just we all had so many ideas of I was in the games group so it was trying to work out what kind of game we wanted to make what we wanted to achieve with it and to try to cooperate so that the end result is a more positive one something that we could essentially upload to the internet as a pdf and people could print it and play it at home I love the exercise I did of the mashup of, of games in which uh, Cecily, started, Cecily started saying her idea was about fast fa fashion, but then Anthony immediately picking up. Oh, maybe we could talk about the supply chain, and then uh, supply chain, and then Emma bringing it all uh, together, like already thinking about of games, uh, finding out through the tag where the factory is, and then trying to find a person that works in that factory. So 
this is just a small example, but showcase how they work together in terms of, it was brilliant. It was really nice to see. Emma was committed to making sure that it was a playable game. So all of our ideas, we were just able to throw out and sort of think, add them and contribute and build off each other. And then at the end of the day, like, I think Emma had to deal with the really challenging part of making sure it actually was a cohesive product um, that was playable. In the future, we had to think about how we could make, how we could bring back that like key core element of collaboration, which is so important for yeah the birth of games because yeah without that kind of person to person player to player experience um yeah you kind of you miss well basically you have the game but you don't have the play and that's yeah it's kind of the game but not yet brought to life so yeah that was quite challenging maybe actually because of the fact that they aren't necessarily like um really like immersed in the world of game design that they've actually managed to come up with a concept that is really kind of outside of the box. So the actual number cards, there are four suits, earth um, or fire, air, earth and water. Um, and then there are two other sets of cards, event cards and discovery cards. Um, the main page would be like the logo and then a little bit of writing about like the Sustainable Futures Academy. And then sort of these big buttons are like inspiration and then actions. And then if you clicked on the <laughs> sorry, my sketches for that. If you clicked on the inspiration page. In the exhibition, our job is to put together different content and to think about ways to link different ideas. There's quite a bit to take into consideration. There's both the look and feel and how each site or page is connected to each other. What's this now? You know, how are we classifying our exhibition? There's also the content itself. So the way the content is presented should sort of be reflected through um, how the page is designed. It's um, a, cha a bit of a challenge because we don't have all the content at the moment. My group were sort of feeling a responsibility about, you know, to, 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 dem to demonstrate the other group's work, but we didn't know what that was going to be. So that was tough. If we also don't know what we are doing, <laughs> everything it gets more complicated, spe specifically in our group, because it's not that we are doing pr producing individual pieces, but we are really collaborating and working together. So we want to take users on a journey with us um, throughout sustainability topics. Because all of us know sustainability is not cannot be achieved with one subject, one person. It's like it needs the help from everyone. The communication of sustainability is really unfun most of the times. And I really feel that something is changing here because we're trying to communicate it in a, like a shiny way. Um, because that's the only way that we're going to have an impact and carry out this and scale it up to a way that we can communicate it so that we can empower people. And so people can become more mindful of what it is that they're doing and believe that it actually works. See the whole process from beginning to the to the end, um, so much changed, and it wasn't only the participants uh, doing the work, but it was a, a true collaboration. You can already see there's learning. You can already see people have changed their views. You can already see people gain new skills. I, I was afraid that because we were not following the steps that I'm used to um, in my day-to-day -day life, we wouldn't be successful or we wouldn't manage to make anything. But I was, um, I learned that, you know, there are many ways of, of uh, progressing. And you know, all the stuff that is coming out and just hearing the little snippets of people saying, I didn't know I could do this. I used Adobe Sparks to put a little video together for my research group when I was out in Sweden. So it's actually skills that I'm actually using. I recognized just how connected a visual imagination of journey, like a map, um, can be when you think about progress or sustainability or going anywhere. And the ways that you can tweak existing games to like fit with what you want to get across or to happen or for people to a way for people to feel when they play the game. I think just thinking about words in, in a different way and how you can use them to really like try and inspire people or try and get people to really like care about things. How to design a website from scratch using a new prototyping software to be creative and bold and express myself into words in a way that I never imagined it before. Yeah. Oh, people enjoy looking at pictures and colours and 
kind of making it a lot easier to understand. The academy really plays on all these different like levels and touches on all the senses. Uh, academy makes me think, how could I sell my, my research and how to like get everyone just like involved in this project and just let more and more people to know the, imp the importance for me, it's really opened up um, what, what pu public engagement of, of science can be. It's a dynamic between the people, uh, the researchers and the artists, and that, in the, where, um, where everybody's skills comes to fore rather than um, um, one leaves. And what I really loved about this project is that it was all of these different disciplines, you know, thinking about science, thinking about um, politics and international relations and all that stuff, also through a creative lens. and. It's nice to find inspiration from all the other disciplines and people and also the cultures. We have, yeah, I work with people from all over the world and I, I feel like it opened my eyes a bit, I widened my horizon. Yeah. Verna, there is a quite interesting network here in Berlin that I was not aware of. And now I am. <laughs> and it was actually really, really refreshing and really encouraging to see so many of the younger um, guys in the in the team sort of being really enthusiastic and really positive about being able to achieve a sustainable future. It's just like so refreshing to, to see people who are like, well, let's make a plan and make it happen rather than just like make a plan and then discuss it and then discuss it again. <laughs> what I found revealing to me is that what makes sustainable futures possible is a rooted and secure community and that um, this experience kind of gave me a hint of what that could be like. To have such outcomes is, uh, you know, th this is what you aim for. I'm sick of being told to dream. I'm tired of being told, imagine. This sustainable future needs our decisive action. Trying our best is no longer enough. Saying we're environmentalists is no longer enough. Words are no longer enough. It's time to act. A sustainable future starts now.